we now have the ability to to do, do uh, dual factor authentication. We could enable it. So once it's saved, you get the prompt. Now you can access all the different features. That works for the SQL authenticated accounts, standard and master accounts, and the Windows imported accounts, which is the one I just tested. Another feature we brought in was the importing uh, activity. So you could import a uh, keyword into the category um, lists. So here we could use the import category, and then you could go to the CSV that you had previously created. It will create the category with the keywords, or if the category already exists, it will update the category with the new keywords in, in it. Uh, it will also check if the keyword is duplicated, it will uh, skip those duplicate uh, keywords. And it will give you a summary uh, of the keywords that were entered to each category. The same functionality was added to the website category. So you could import the different domains into different categories. Once they're imported, you could see that the new category is created and you could expand to see the URLs within it. So those two features um, were requested by multiple customers uh, along the year, so we're glad to see this into this new version. On the categories, are we locale based or only always English, Spanish, French? They're English. Okay. Yeah, it does not handle um, locale. foreign, uh, key, especially the keyword ones. Um, if they have um, uh, foreign characters, uh, the search uh, may not match what um, what you put in there. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yep. The other features that came in that are new was uh, we added a new um, Mac deployment uh, bootstrap. Uh, so it allows to deploy the clients to a Mac. Um, I don't have a new um, OS 13 install that I could demonstrate that it works, but um, it, um, yeah, you could now push and install remotely or create a manual installer and run it on that newer operating system um, and get those recordings into the um, the console. The, um, the same for Android. With Androids, a new, um, so you could create a manual uh, deploy, uh, deployment file through our console and then take and bring it in to both the BlackBerry uh, management uh, system to deploy the clients through the BlackBerry interface, or you could also use the Microsoft Intune, which we also have documented. So you could bring the setup file, configure your server with a URL address that um, that the clients can communicate and verify their certificate. And once that's verified, then uh, you will be able to monitor those Android devices. Yeah, it's very important for the Androids that the CA certificate, the root certificate that our console uses um, is imported to those an Android devices so they could communicate. And that's done via both the Intune or the BlackBerry uh, interface. We had multiple fixes for, for the risk score. Uh, one of the bugs we had for longstanding was that it would not show the risk score um, when using a Windows authenticated account. Um, so that's now resolved. We could see risk scores on it. Um, the Active Directory um, integration uh, got consolidated into one location. So now it's, it's um, only here that gets um, 
updated uh, to connect to your product key. And then from there, you could use it into all the different sections. Not like in the old version that you, you had to add it in the behavioral groups as well as in the users or in the endpoint, uh, endpoint agents. So now everything got consolidated into one location. Um, audit history had a, several different bugs that were addressed. Uh, one of the issues um, was that the um, that it would fail, it would stop logging events. <laughs> so we uh, we found a a, a way to uh, make the the cache um, expire uh, a lot longer, so it wouldn't. Uh, stop recording auditing. So that was a, a good fix that we added recently. So we could capture all the the different um, audit events and continue doing that. Um, the the uh, other features that we brought in into the setup, they are part of the setup now. We added under the support folder a diagnostics tool. Uh, this diagnostics tool is to be executed through uh, PowerPoint, uh, PowerShell. So we could open PowerShell. And in here, um, you could, um, it has a set of menus where, where you could um, connect to the SQL instance, collect server logs, collect, um, do testing of the ports, verify the connectivity of, of the, uh, very add server, uh, server components with our URLs and, and and between the clients and server. Uh, it is very powerful. Um, there are a number of uh, different selections. So once you connect to the database, you could then have additional uh, menu options to to help troubleshoot uh, the customer's environment. Um, another feature that came in, which I had to find it in my email, uh, was the uh, system health alerts. Um, so we um, we send, if the client is not reporting in the past, we only send, oh, the client hasn't checked in X amount of days. So now what happens is if the clients are checking in, but they're not sending the, the data that is meant to be recorded, uh, you'll get a separate alert that will tell you which data was uh, is coming in, which one is not coming in. And how it looks like, I put it in my uh, his, this document here. So this is the classic one and it still happens, right? So if the computer hasn't checked in in five days, it will tell you uh, which computer hasn't checked in. Uh, but then if the computer is checking in, but it has not sent some of the activity that is meant to be recording, then it will mark them in red. So in this case, my computer is report, was reporting screenshots and user status and applications, but it was not giving any, any chat, web, or email. Now, this does not necessarily mean that, um, that the recorder is broken. Uh, it could be that the user didn't do those type of events. All right? So it's up to the end user to see, okay, what type of activity they they do? So they would have to go back and look at the recordings and consider if it's okay. I see in the snapshots that he was doing chat, so then that that would definitely be a problem. But if um, yeah, so and a this report um, is something that will just start an investigation from the for the uh, administrator. Quick question, Nelson, is that? based on what it's based on what's coming into the policy or the database i assume but what Correct. about the policy options are off so if the policy options are off you'll see it like this one here it'll it'll scratch out the network so it oh, looks okay. at the recording right. policy and if let's say they have snapshots turned off you'll see snapshots uh turn like disabled as well okay thank you yeah now this uh, the days uh, that are set are um, are set the same way as the as the other one uh, um, in here and in alert five day. So if you set that to be fourteen days, then those two system health alerts will be looking at the fourteen day uh, to be triggered. The other utility 
that we brought in was the user export. So we've all, always had the user export utility, but now it's been um, there's been several bugs fixed on it, and it also now allows you the end user to run it on a non-administrator account. Uh, before it, they had to be a local administrator, so now a standard account can also use the export utility. Uh, the export utility works the same as before. You would install it, and once it's installed, um, you could then query your database uh, for all the users' events and export them with different types of data. So in here we could do, do yeah, just so there's the, the different types of data. So you would uncheck the options that you don't want. And then you could change the format. You have several formats uh, that you can use. So if you want to have them all recorded events into a one data type that you could view through the data explorer, a uh, data viewer, uh, you could set, set them up as a SpectreSoft format. So once you have them as a SpectreSoft format, you could set the format that you want and then export it. Uh, it does give you the option to password protect the, the, the data files. I'm going to choose no in this case. So once they're exported, you could go to your documents folder and you would see the exported events. So the exported events will get consolidated into the folder according to the folder um, format that you chose. Once they're there, now you could use the other utility that uh, the older versions of our product was missing, which is the data viewer. So you could install the data viewer. While you're installing, I just want to make sure that you know some of the new folks who are on the call. Spectrosoft uh, was the former name of the company, correct? And this uh, that's why we still have the residual name Spectrosoft uh, for the data format. Spectre format, yeah. 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 So once the viewer opens up, um, you would go to File, Open Data Files, and you would now navigate to that document um, that we just exported. And once they're loaded, you could then view what was exported. You could play it just like you see it in the console. You can go to stop it, go to applications and see what applications were used, websites and so on. So that so this is useful for customers that um, their data is about to be deleted and they need to keep some users activity for long term storage so they would they would take these utility, export the user data out, either at the like whatever format they want, and then have it stored for long term on a location they desire. Right? If they password protect that, is there a way to recover it? The the password if they. So the password protection, um, it's only for the SDF format. So the viewer will actually ask for the password, and you type in the password, and then you could view the data. If that password is lost, that data is unrecoverable. Other than that, the um, the server address changer um, has been improved uh, in order to be able to recreate the certificates uh, and all the bindings. There's been several bugs that were addressed in the server address changer. Um, a couple of things that are new on that on that tool is that it will um, upload um, and update the URL for the Chrome agents. If the computers are offline, uh, meaning they don't have internet access, only network access, uh, they would have to uncheck this option. That way, it does not attempt to download the Chrome uh, record, uh, recorder files again. So you would make the change, uncheck that option, and then this would work when you're offline. Um, if you leave it on while it's offline, at the end of the process, it'll give you an error, fail to update the Chrome agents. For uh, those customers that were using computers offline, they would not get the Chrome OS. It would not show if it's an offline server. Uh, new on this feature as well, I don't have any new um, uh, additional recorders, but you could hide the, um, the recorders um, just like you did before. 
and you could unhide it um, if it's there. In the past, I think there was a bug on that. I think that covers all the features itself. The rest is, yeah, bugs. All righty then. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Thank you so much, Nelson. Good demo. Yeah, you're, you're welcome.